All right. So once again, okay. So I'm just going through the basics of short-term insurance. So uh, in 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 most countries, this is actually called general or long long life insurance. So anything that's not life uh, life uh, related uh, is considered non life insurance or short term insurance. Uh, I believe that short term insurance is is the term used only in South Africa, and and there's a reason for it. Why is it short term? Because you can literally have cover today, and and then you can stop the cover tomorrow. So, for example, you 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 buy a car today, and then tomorrow you decide to sell it, and then you can you can stop the the cover. So there's no notice period or anything like that. Okay, and you can always add or delete cover uh, as you like. Um, so so that's where the short term comes from, and I think compared to other lines of insurance, uh, I think things tend to happen more quickly. Uh, because uh, I mean, a client requests a car to be removed today. We have to do it today. Or if a car, if a client is in an accident, or if there's a fire, that's you know the issues are, are here and now. So I think that's where the short term comes in, uh, and it's mostly covered for uh, physical assets. So everything you can touch, basically. Uh, but it also covers financial risk. Uh, such as the loss of income, or, or cyber crime, or a ransom. So there are lots of interesting covers within the short-term insurance space. Uh, as long as there's a risk and people are able to underwrite it and price it, then there would be a, a short-term insurance product. In some cases, this also covers people for example, a personal accident insurance, uh, which is not a replacement for life insurance, but it's, it's just a very limited cover for, for accident only. Uh, the, the more comprehensive cover would be life insurance and, and medical. So personal insurance, so the, it, it's split into two categories. So it's personal and commercial. Uh, with impersonal, uh, this is relevant for all of you because you you would have, uh, I hope you would have personal insurance. So that would be your house, which is your immovable asset, your, your content. So when it comes to content, if you have to flip the house upside down, anything that moves, is content. I understand that sometimes people think content is, is just furniture or it's just clothing. No, it's everything inside the house. Why? Because if, uh, if your house or if my house catches fire and I lose everything inside the house, I, I need to be able to replace all of those items. So when you insure contents, you always make sure that you insure the whole or the full value in today's term. Okay, obviously you've got your motor, which includes your car, your uh, watercraft, if you have any, or your motorcycle. Okay. And there's cover for portable items, uh, which is also referred to, to all, all risk. Uh, it basically covers your personal belongings uh, when you're outside of your place, anywhere in the world, and it covers for damages or theft or accidental loss. So the premium for that uh, is usually much higher, uh, but obviously that's because uh, there's a higher risk. So a lot of people uh, insure their phones these days because you, you always have your phone with you and then they, and they are quite expensive. And then there would be a personal liability, um, which is a lie. It, it doesn't happen often. So for example, if I have a dog and 
and for some reason, you know, they 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 run outside and then bite someone, and that person decides to sue me, then then the insurer will will stand in my place and and, and handle the case. Personal liability is, is much more uh, relevant in in countries like United States. Uh, they like to sue each other. So there will be cases where you would walk past someone's house and and they forget to sweep the, the snow on the ground um, and you fall and, and they can sue you. So it's not too much, you know, we, we don't see so much of that here, uh, but it, it does happen. And then you also get personal accident for for your for your uh, accidental damage to to the body. Um, and then lastly, there are value added services such as um, roadside assistance. If you need a if you need your car to be towed, or uh, if you want someone to drive your car after you you've 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 gone drinking, those are those are value added services which which is also available. It's, uh, are there any, any questions? Uh, Ed, um, in terms of uh, contents, I think that, you know, most people, they will, uh, they pay attention to the car because, you know, it's uh, car insurance and also like homeowners insurance uh, uh, insure their, their house. But I think that uh, many people uh, that don't seem to pay enough attention on, on contents. So and, and also that uh, when it comes to ensuring the uh, the, the evaluate the value uh, of of the contents, I think that um, I think most people they actually have no clue. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's uh, that's that's where the problem I, I see. Yeah, a lot of people have a have a have an incorrect understanding or they feel that it might be too much trouble to claim because you know they they want to have proof you know so so it becomes quite tricky uh, i always clients to do which is just to walk around the house and take a video because everything were to burn down that that video can be can be your saving grace because inside the video the insurer can see what was inside the house and, and in most cases, the insurer, they're not too picky around, around general content such as TV, fridge. You know, everyone has a fridge, everyone has a TV. So they would, you know, they would be quite easy on, on, on those items. Uh, it's only items such as your electronics, like your laptops or your, or your jewelries, which can be quite expensive. That's where they really pay attention on, on providing proof. So for those items, you know, the clients needs to have, you know, have uh, adequate proof. <clears throat> Can you still see my screen? Okay. So commercial insurance, just in a Sorry, nutshell. I, I see yes. Julian has a hand up. Oh, so yeah. Okay. Yes, Julian. Uh, uh, can you explain Sastria? Oh, yes, Sastria. So Cesarea, thank you, thank you for raising that. So Cesarea is found on, on both personal and commercial policy. It's not compulsory, that, but they, they make it compulsory. So Cesarea is for special risk, uh, mostly riot and, and social unrest. The insurers always exclude those risks. So that's why the government came in, I think about 60 or 70 years ago, to set up set up this fund just for riot or social unrest. So let me give you an example. So let's say a client has a shop, and it was set uh, it was set on fire by uh, by by uh, by riot. Then the claim will be paid from Cesarea. So even though even though it's a fire claim, but it's it is caused by riot. So that's where. It's, that's where Cesarea comes in. So if you look at your personal or commercial policy, there's always a small premium paid towards Cesarea. Okay, commercial insurance, um, just in a nutshell. So there are commercial lines, which is your normal, typical commercial uh, policy. So it would cover you for fire, theft, uh, electronic equipment, motor, motor cars, 
uh, there are more special types such as uh, business interruption. So it covers you for any loss of income and goods in transit. Um, there will also be liability. These are just some examples. So I didn't show, I didn't want to show the, the, the whole shebang, uh, but just to give an idea of how they, how they split the, the different kind of business. And then there would also be a specialist lines, uh, for example, marine or goods in transit. So if our clients send something from overseas and they need insurance, we we can uh, we can we can help them. There's also constructional risk, which is for for uh, quite a comprehensive cover for construction. There's also specialist liability, uh, such as well professional indemnity is one of them, or if there's any um, li liability for construction projects, for example. And then last but not least, uh, there would be really specialized covers like cybercrime, uh, which is on the rise, and also financial crime. So financial crime would be any anyone who wants to steal money from a company uh, from the outside or from the inside. And obviously, we also have professional indemnity. So, so why do they... Some, some clients find it quite complex to understand commercial insurance. So he, here's an example. So if you look at uh, fire insurance, okay, it covers for uh, what they call insured perils. So there will be your fire, flood, earthquake, lightning, etc. This section only covers for fire. And then you need to ensure your office contents under a different section and there's, there's fire cover, but there's also accidental damage. Uh, they also include, include theft cover. <clears throat> and then there's a section for theft and there's a section for fidelity. I just want to give you an example of why, why do they make it so complicated. It's, it's all because of uh, uh, probability and, and, and quantity. So, I mean, Kevin as an actuary would, would tell you that each risk each section has a different risk. So if you think of a fire, it doesn't have it doesn't happen often. So why the premium is very low. So if if a client wants to insure a stock of two million rand, it would only cost maybe three hundred rand a month. I mean that's very cheap. But then if you want to insure theft cover or 30,000 yuan, for example, you still have to pay 300 yuan. Why? Because theft tends to happen more often, and uh, so there's a higher probability. <clears throat> and um, so that's, that's how they split the, the different sections. Fidelity is <clears throat> any theft that's related to staff. <clears throat> and the reason why they split it is because once again, there's a different risk factor attached to it. In actual fact, uh, fidelity has a higher rate than theft. So based on statistics, they find that a lot of uh, uh, robberies or burglaries are actually staff related. So you actually pay more premium for fidelity. And if you think about it, that's this, uh, this quite true because Nowadays, you know, criminals, they act on information. Either, either information they gather themselves or a staff member gives them information or if they get involved with, with, with the crime. That's where fidelity comes in. Last point about fidelity. So <clears throat> even if only one staff member was involved, there's a fidelity claim. It's not a theft claim. And, and obviously, that's, that's based on the, the, the investigation done by the police or done by the insurer. Okay, last but not least, how do short-term insurers make money? Uh, this is actually one of the first thing I learned uh, when I joined the industry. Uh, so, so you would have your gross written premium, which is sales. So they sell policies. 
and they get and they get premium. They get an income, uh, but they do not retain all that income because they have to uh, pass some of the risk to the reinsurer. Okay? So the reinsurers are, are big, the big companies who will insure the insurers, if that makes sense. Okay, so so there's a reinsurance premium, and then you get a net return premium. So that's very much what the insurer attains for themselves. And obviously, when you run a business, then there are costs of sales. So in this case, there will be claims. Uh, you know, they want to keep it, want to try and keep it around 50 to 60 percent, uh, but it's, it's becoming more, more difficult. Okay, there will be admin cost, uh, and you know they want to keep it to about twelve percent. That's the cost of running, city running your operation. And the last but not least, there will be commission, or there will be a call center, depending on whether they they use the brokers or not. And the commission is regulated, so it could be twelve percent, it could be twenty percent. So it's quite a it's quite a high percentage of of their cost. And then. After all that, then they get a net underwriting profit. And nowadays, if if a if an insurer can make five percent, five to ten percent, that would be that that's actually good. So what that means is, for every hundred rand they receive, at the end of the day, they retain five rand or ten rand. It it sounds very little, but in today's conditions, it's actually not bad. There are companies who, who have made losses. So at the end of the day, they don't retain anything. They actually gave out more money. And then last but not least, uh, there's an investment income. So when, when the insurer collects the premium, uh, they would invest money while they, you know, when they have the cash flow. So they also get investment income from that. So that's how, that's how they make their money. So that's my, uh, that's my uh, short-term insurance 101.